God creates the water and we dig wells. The enemy seeks to stop the wells by covering it with dirt. The wells become dry and the dry wells become prisons. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The world we live in is dying out of thirst. The church is the well where rivers of living water flow to bring life to people. Breakthrough to finances, peace to families, healing to physical bodies and freedom to souls. Join us as we go digging. It's called Digging Wells with a message called Fast Forward. Now I understand Thanksgiving is around the corner. A message on fasting around Thanksgiving is kind of like a contradiction. Um, but this is just to prepare us that after Thanksgiving, that while you're eating your turkey, you already feel guilty. That you already prepare yourself <laughs> for after Thanksgiving, we are going to be doing a fast. Once a month, we do a three day fast. We believe in the power of God that is utilized through prayer and through fasting. In fact, this week, I heard a testimony. One person wrote back to us and said, I received healing from my knee and bipolar condition last year while doing a three day fast with Hungry Generation. And while prayer was being offered through live stream by one of the pastors, God can heal you, God can restore you, and God can revive you when you fast. You can fast forward. I believe when we fast, we move forward. I believe when we fast, we, we, we march forward. Amen? Amen. Fasting is not a starvation. Fasting is not a diet. And fasting is not a hunger strike. It's not you're throwing a fit and saying, I won't eat until you bless me. Uh, it's more of like you are positioning yourself. It's not you squeezing God. God is, already loves you. God already has made a promise to bless you. It's you squeezing your flesh and moving yourself on the side of God and saying, I want to prepare myself for what God has for me. Amen. I've been practicing intermittent fasting for the last a year and a half where almost every work day except the weekends where uh, not to eat for about 12 hours five times a week first for spiritual reasons and secondly for health reasons to to take time to give myself over to to feeling hungry for just a little bit you may say why would you want to punish yourself like that when you have that kind of a physical hunger and you couple it with prayer it releases spiritual hunger plus we are fortunate to be in the part of the world where you can choose to be hungry most of the world it's enforced on them people in the western countries are dying because of overeating people in other countries are dying because of not enough food so we are fortunate a lot of health athletes will tell you a lot of trainers will tell you that intermittent fasting can really help your your physical health and everything but we can do that regularly for our spiritual walk with God and plus most of us we don't do enough of activity throughout the day the amount of food fuel and food we put into our body we don't have enough of exercise that we do throughout the day for the food that we receive it's like it's like putting gas into your car every four hours and not letting that car leave the garage. What's going to happen after a while? The gas will spill. That's what's called being overweight. That's what's called being obese. What is it? It means that you put more fuel than you need. And so that's why some of us, we need to put a little bit less fuel and increase more activity. And as Christians, I'm not just talking about healthy life. I am talking about coupling that with morning prayer, coupling that, combining that with reading of the word. And so what you're doing is that you're developing a fasted life. Not just once in a while when you hit crisis, but when you develop a lifestyle of fasting. And maybe you're not able to fast 72 hours straight, but you can fast 12 hours every other day. Start with that and combine that with prayer so that your spirit man as well as your body is being affected by this discipline early church fasted twice a week every wednesday and every friday early church to, in the book of acts all the way till about 300 years in fact early church fathers spoke that the communities the churches were in 
new. The same way they know today the Christ Christians celebrate Christmas and Easter is the same way community knew. On Wednesday, Christians are fasting. On Friday, Christians are fasting. Now I know they were not doing it to publicize but if communities knew they were fasting it means it was regular and it was routine. It was part of their life. Today unfortunately if you ask an average Christian when they fast that's that's rare. That's just why would you want to do that? We want to create a church. We want to create a community where we don't fast to show off. We don't fast to lose belly fat. We don't fast to squeeze something out of God. We fast because we want to dig wells. And one of the best way to dig through the dirt of disappointment, defeat, delays and all kinds of discouragement, depression, anxiety, unanswered prayer is through the shovel of fasting. Shovel of self-denial. When you to grab that shovel and you begin to dig through into the water of dormant blessings, dormant promises, dormant potential, dormant revival, dormant hunger for God so that it doesn't become dormant but it becomes alive, bubbly and exciting. Can somebody say amen? And so I want to encourage you today. When you fast, you can fast forward. Your life can go forward faster when you fast. In Acts chapter 13 verse 2 says the following. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, so they fasted more, they laid hands on them and they sent them away. Verse 4. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit and it continues where they went and the adventures they've experienced with God. I'm going to have three points for you today. The first point is fasting is serving the Lord. When we preach we serve the people. When we minister to kids we serve the kids. When you take care of your house you serve your family. Now it's true in Colossians it says everything we do we do unto God. Amen. But there is a direct way that you can serve God through prayer and fasting. That is why I said fasting is not starvation. Fasting is not a hunger strike. Fasting is not a diet. When you're only not eating that's just a starvation. But when you are focused on ministering to the Lord it's no longer just a starvation, it's a service to God. God doesn't find pleasure in seeing your stomach grouch and your head have a headache and your mouth have a bad breath. It's not that. It's just you telling God you're so much more important than my essentials. You're so much more important than something that even my body needs. I need you more than that. The Bible says to wait upon the Lord and He will renew your strength. The Bible says when we wait upon God, He will recharge us. How do you wait upon God? It's the same way a waiter waits on a table. You serve God. Pretty much God during your fasting becomes a guest at the table. And you're coming and you're attending to God's desires. You're attending to God's needs. You're attending to God's pleasures. You're attending to God's craving. The Bible says he seeks such and worship him. When you fast, God sits at the table and you are the waiter. You're waiting upon him. You're, you're attending to him. You are quenching his passions and his desires. You're coming and ministering to God through worship, through attentiveness to him, through your thoughts and your emotions and your affections being gazed upon him. You wait upon God the way a waiter waits on a table by serving Him directly. When we serve God, during fasting I believe our hunger is restored. We are a hungry generation. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jesus says, if anyone who believes in me, let him come to me. And He says, and those who thirst, let him drink from me. In Isaiah it says that why do you spend money on things that don't satisfy? Why do you waste your bread on things that don't nourish you? He says come to me and buy water for me. Buy it. He said get it for free if you don't have the money. And he says this water that will come out of you, he says it will quench your thirst. 
see one of the things that could happen with us when we experience small blessings of God is it can quench our thirst but fasting resets our hunger fasting resets our passion for God fasting puts us back in the same place when we were nothing when we had nothing when we knew nothing but we only knew one thing God saved me God loves me God is for me God will never abandon me God will never forsake me though my mother forsake me he will not though my father leave me he will not he is the father to the four to the orphans he is the shield and a shelter in the sun he is my refuge he is my strength he will fill my horn with oil he is my lord my light and my salvation and there you are driving your mercedes but hungry as though you're just taking a bus there you are blessed with the best job but you are thirsty for God people talk to you they feel that hunger from you why and it's not because something is missing it's because you denied yourself on purpose of essentials so you can be filled with what is needed and that is Jesus I don't want us to lose our hunger I don't want us to lose our hunger when we get a new facility, when we will have conferences in the largest stadiums of our state, when we will be invited all over as a ministry, when you will go higher in your career, when you will have the respect of your community. I want you to be as hungry for God as you were when you were 16, as hungry for God as when you were when you were 19. And to do that, you have to physically go hungry, so you go spiritually hungry. Somebody shout hungry. Somebody say hungry generation hungry generation hunger physically restores hunger spiritually secondly when we fast it gets mastery over our appetites all of us have appetites cravings urges desires passions and a lot of them are fleshly a lot of those urges get us in trouble some people develop lung cancer from because of their appetite for smoking. Some people lose their job because of their appetite for drinking. Some people lose their spouse because of their appetite for anything and everybody that moves except the spouse. Your appetite can get you into jail. Your appetite can get you fired. Your appetite can cause a delay in your promotion. Your appetite, they are not to be trusted. They are unbridled. They are uncontrolled. When you fast, you train your appetites not to dictate your life so when you get into the moment of temptation your appetites are under control because they've been trained in that season of fasting it's too late to try to control your appetites when you're in temptation it's like a boxer going into a boxing ring doing weights right before that you don't see a boxer going in and doing push-ups or pull-ups in a boxing ring it's too late if you party for three months and you get into a boxing ring and you're overweight, you're out of shape, it's too late. Yeah. My friend, a lot of us, when we get into temptation, our appetites are unprepared and untrained because there is never anything we don't give it to them. Whatever our flesh wants, our flesh gets. But when you fast, you're saying, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. I give you up control and the precious Holy Spirit he in return gives you that control that's why the fruit of the spirit is not God control the fruit of the spirit is self-control that means as I fast I say Holy Spirit have control I finish the fast and the spirit says Vlad I give you the control Holy Spirit doesn't control me he leads me fills me touches me he guides me he prays through me but he never controls me who controls me? Vlad controls me when God is in control of my life. I have control over my mouth. I have control over my feelings. I have control over my mood swings. I have control over my urges. I have control over my lust. I have control over my craving. I have control over my passions. See, when you yield control, God gives it back to you and say, have self-control. Control yourself. Control your feelings. Control your emotions. Pull yourself up and tell your soul, you will praise God. I know you feel discouraged, but you will worship Him. Why? I am in control. My feelings are not in control. My urges are not in control. My flesh is not in control. Why? Because I gave it up to the Holy Ghost. And He gave it back to me. And He gave it back to me. And He gave it back to me. And that's why I want to take a moment and give God some praise. Some praise. He restored my dignity.
dignity. He restored my dignity. He pulled me out of the miry clay and gave me authority and gave me power, gave me dominion and gave me control. That's why when you control yourself, you're too busy. You don't have time to control others. People who control others, only reason they do that, they're not controlling themselves. That's why you want a man who has the fruit of self-control. He'll never control you, honey. He'll never control you. You want a wife that is fasting, yields her control to the Holy Spirit. Because when she controls herself, her mood swings, her feelings, her feelings and all of that stuff, she won't be controlling you. My Lord Jesus Christ. I just hit a gold my right there. Touch your spouses, control yourself. <laughs> when we fast, we gain mastery over our urges. And then when the temptation comes, not that these urges are not real, but they're trained. They listen to you now because you've trained them during a season of fasting. I always tell young people, if you take control over a burger and french fries during fasting, what's a burger here is a liquor in here and if you are tempted by a french fries and the french fries takes over you that little piece of uh, potato takes over you <laughs> and the young people sometimes say oh it doesn't matter i'm not a legalist no you're not a legalist but you also trained your flesh that your flesh get what it wants and french fries during temptation equals to pornography during outside of temptation equals to drugs or equals to something else or equals to gossip or equals to something else that lying or cheating where the urges it's the same urge where you are training them in the school here and once you say that 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 that, that urge says but just take one donut nobody will see it i know you're fasting but you're not fasting from donuts you're fasting from everybody else you grab a donut here and then next thing you know is that the urge says but but lie it's just one cigarette it's not a big deal uh, it's just just one club it's not a big deal but see if your urges were bridled here and you said no 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 no. we're finishing at six o'clock and it's only 5 55 hang in there tiger everything's gonna be fine then what happens is when the urges come in they know what to expect from you because you'll give them exactly what you gave them there you'll give them here because fasting gives you a mastery over your appetites fasting quickens my hunger for God it gives me mastery over my appetites thirdly fasting it increases my sensitivity to the Holy Spirit it says in here when they were fasting they ministered to the Lord it didn't say anything about mastery of the flesh but we know it happens automatically and it says the Spirit said now I understand we believe in that we teach people they can hear God all the time but this is different then you coming every day and having a word from God for somebody yet your life never changes. What I'm talking about this is when the Spirit says something and your life is never the same. What I'm talking here is when the Spirit says something and it forever changes your finances. It forever changes your school. It forever changes your family. It changes your life and these kind of Spirit said they don't happen every day. They don't happen every month. They might happen one time in three years. They might happen one time in two years. Where it changes the trajectory, the direction, and the dynamic, and the temperature, and the climate of your very existence. While they fasted, the Spirit said. Last year around this time, I started to take time uh, during Wednesdays to, to fast and pray. To kind of rekindle these habits. I've had them when I was a young man in school. But then uh, kind of abandoned it switch this to something else and around November and December I started to do the same thing during Wednesday carve seven hours seven eight hours just to worship just to worship just to be read the scriptures worship be read the scripture worship be da 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 and then during it I felt for the 2020 to switch something that I was doing for the past six years I was a partner of different ministries for every single month for the past six years outside of paying tithes to our church that I love hungry generation I was sending donations to different ministries it was just part of my habit and I felt that in 2020 I have to become and open a partnership department with Hungry Gen and to encourage myself and other people to become partners with Hungry Gen because God is doing something great and that there is a good soil and I need to sow it as well not only into other ministries but also into what God is doing here 
and so we opened partnership department by the way so a lot of there's quite a few people in our midst who are partners with hungry gen from this church and churches around the world and so starting january i started to direct my partnerships to hungry gen the second thing that i felt during that time is to do a sacrifice sunday a sunday where each one of us prays for god to give us something to sacrifice for most of it it was financial and when we did that it was incredible not only this building got paid off a lot of upgrades that happened the things you see today they were not here like this last year but the miracles that took place with a lot of people that sacrifice are mind-blowing people who were waiting to buy land for years on the Sunday they sacrificed they found land people who were trying to buy a house this stuff just crazy miracles happen but the third thing that I felt during my time of prayer and fasting, I felt the Holy Spirit placed on my heart. I was embarrassed to tell it to anybody for weeks. Is that in the 2020, because of my faithfulness to God, I felt in my heart that God will give me personal partners. Now, for the record, I didn't really need them. My finances, I'm doing good. We sacrifice me and my wife. We give a lot, but we're doing good. We live comfortably, but I felt this promise from God. I didn't tell it anybody in fact I didn't even tell my wife because I didn't want to be perceived as a greedy guy and so I didn't tell anybody until I get a message and that gentleman is in this room I won't point him out not to embarrass him I get a message I didn't know this gentleman was coming to our church messages and says the Lord spoke to me to support you for 12 months with this amount of money and I said really that's crazy so then I tell my wife and I said God spoke to me a few months ago that I'm gonna get partners and I'm like this is a confirmation to me the money wasn't the issue to me the fact that God spoke something so ridiculous and it's coming to pass two weeks later I am in Florida I get another message of a couple in Seattle area they say exactly the same thing we've been wanting to do this for some time we're committing for next 12 months to become your personal partners I teared up not because of the amount of money the money comes in my life and they go the money is not the issue but the fact that it was a confirmation of something that was so ridiculous when I heard it as of today by God's grace I have four of those partners I saw this work when you fast and pray things you don't think about God increases your sensitivity and you start hearing God now I'm not a prophet I don't come every day and say God told me God told me a lot of times I see people walk around God told me God told me God told me every day God told them something their life never changes there is difference when when the spirit says and it changes everything about your life and you don't have to be a prophet for those of you who say but I don't hear God's voice start fasting and you will have an increased sensitivity to the Spirit of God you will have increased sensitivity to the voice of God and God will change the temperature and the climate of your life even if you're like Samuel and God speaks and you'll miss it he will speak again he will speak again he will speak again until you hear it with your ears with your spirit and with your life God will change your life because when you fast you humble yourself and God loves when people humble themselves and he will take nobody and make him into somebody he will take a zero and turn it into a hero he will take your trial and turn it into a triumph because God is in a business of transformation and the reason why I'm sharing this is not to tell you I got four partners because they only committed for 12 months and so but the reason why I'm sharing with you is that to me it was a, such a great testament to something the Holy Spirit places that is, is embarrassing to tell other people because you're scared you're like I'm, am I just hearing voices am I just coming up with stuff and then you see months later God confirms that and it's so beautiful fasting is ministering to the Lord it increases my hunger gives me mastery of my appetites and it increases my sensitivity to his presence and his spirit but the second thing I want you to see is that when they were fasting the Bible says the spirit said now separate to me now meaning not sometime later today right now separate meaning isolate these people from everything else that they're doing and give them directly Holy Spirit says to me meaning I want to have them I want to if I could use this word possess them I want to have their attention I want to have their focus I want to have their heart to me Paul and Barnabas separate them I believe fasting also helps us to live a separated consecrated sanctified dedicated life I know we don't like to talk about it today 
nowadays about separation and I want you to see the Holy Spirit did not tell Paul what he needs to separate himself from he only focused on what he needs to separate himself to because see when we focus on what we need to be separated from we build formulas but what I need to be separated from might be different than what you need to be separated from the things you battle with might be different than the things I struggle with but one thing that is common is that while it might differ what we need to be separated from one thing that is sure is who we need to be separated to and I believe God doesn't want us to focus too much on do I need to be separated from Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus and Apple thing now that they created. Jeez, everybody's creating something. And then there's new social media. TikTok just got released not long ago. Do I need to be separated from hanging out with my bad friends? Do I need to be separated from spending too much time on my social media? I don't think that's the focus. The focus is not what I need to be separated from. It's who I need to be separated to. And once I focus on the Holy Spirit, He will help me and He will sort things out that needs to go on the back seat. But if I focus on trying to remove this, remove that and remove that, I will live my life in legalism which has no power and has no life. But when I focus my life on the Holy Spirit, He gives me the power to disconnect, be separated, be dedicated and disconnected from the things that are of this world or things that are good. But they're no longer nurturing for where I'm headed to. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20, but in the great house there are vessels, some of gold, some of silver, some of wood and some of clay, some for honor, others for dishonor. And it says this, therefore if anyone in here, in other words four types of vessels, gold, silver, wood and clay, these are callings you don't decide them you only discover them for example some of us are born with a gold vessel we got the gifts you were the uh the cheerleader in high school or you were the, the main football player you were, you have brains and there's some of us a little bit less more average and then there's the wood <laughs> we barely finished high school for us just graduating was the biggest miracle. The fact that it was just C plus and then, or D plus, C minus, it's like didn't matter, we made it. And then there is a clay. We dropped out, didn't make it. it just, just things didn't work out for us. It's just not the way our mind is wired. We're not as driven as other people. And maybe you're looking at yourself and like, I don't have those qualities as other people. And that's okay. Whether you're wood, clay, no, well, it's not okay to drop out of high school, by the way, just, we need to finish it. Wood, clay, silver and gold but all of these four vessels decide they are in charge if they will be vessels of honor or vessels of dishonor you don't decide if you're a vessel of gold but you decide if you're a vessel for honor you don't decide if you're a vessel of wood but you do decide if you will be a vessel of honor to the holy spirit that means you don't decide which family you were born but you do decide which family will now influence you you don't decide which era you were born in and what happened to you in your past but you do decide what will happen in your future by deciding and saying my life will honor the Holy Spirit my life will be spent in hunger yes I cannot change the past I can't change the drama I can't change the trauma I can't change the abuse but I can change my fasting I can change my future through my humility I can change my future through my dedication I can change my future through my consecration and through my life of holiness I can set my plate aside and choose the presence of the Holy Spirit and God says those who honor me I will honor those who fast I will exalt those who pray I will answer them somebody shall vessel for honor somebody shall vessel for honor say I will honor the Holy Spirit say I will consecrate I will dedicate my life to the Holy Spirit when you do that he will begin to honor you you know what you and I do in our free time will either enslave you or set you free you are enslaved by what you enjoy you may say but how do I honor the Holy Spirit the best way to do that 
is with our free time. That doesn't mean that each one of us has to separate ourselves once a week and to spend a whole day in church. Most of us that's not going to be possible but we do have time after our work, after our hobbies and plenty of free time. Free time separates winners from losers. People all go to high school but some people after high school smoke drink some people just play ball though they'll never play basketball in their future and they waste all of their free time by hanging out with their friends impressing people who won't even remember their name in five years others they jump in the book they study they take online classes and you see five six years those guys we made fun of are now we're asking to hire asking them could you hire me could you rent me your apartment could you rent me your rental prop could you take me on your team why because how they spend their free time they honor the Holy Spirit and some people what they did with their free time they defiled their consciousness they destroyed their faith and they grieved the Holy Spirit what do you do with your free time before you go to sleep when you lay your head on a pillow is the Spirit pleased I'm not saying did you do something incriminating. I didn't say did you do something that will land you in the Benton County Jail. I'm saying is the spirit in the quietness of your soul, does he smile or is he grieved? Does your consciousness like a soft pillow or is your consciousness buzzing because it's been violated? And is your inner self, is it built up next morning you wake up with a spring in your step or is your inner self just got three holes because of what you watched? There's three holes means you're leaking in inside. How you spend your free time can honor the Holy Spirit or it can violate your conscience, grieve the Holy Spirit and destroy you on the inside. And then before you go to sleep instead of pure consciousness, instead of a presence of the Holy Spirit, you go to sleep with guilt, condemnation and shame. And you make promises to yourself, tomorrow I'll do better. But you made those promises every night before only to do the same thing the night before. You become a vessel of dishonor. What does that mean? That means you became a vessel whom God made out of gold but you chose not to honor the Holy Spirit. You spend your time on things your future doesn't need. Your future career doesn't require your depth knowledge of video games. Your future you doesn't require a depth obsession with the things you obsess about. Your future career and your calling does not need that information that you are fully accumulating today. And that is why many times we are a vessels of for dishonor. God made us of gold. God made us of wood. God made us of clay. Or God made us of silver. But that is God's decision. Our decision whether we will be a vessel of consecration, a vessel of dedication, a vessel of separation, and a vessel that says I honor you Holy Spirit. I can't speak like he does or she does but I can honor you. I can't sing like he does but I can honor you. I don't have the money they do but I can honor you. I don't, I'm not as good looking as they are but I can honor you. I don't have that that they have but I can honor you. I honor you Holy Spirit with my free time. I honor you Holy Spirit with my finances. I honor you Holy Spirit with my heart. I am a vessel for honor. And God is able to take somebody out of nowhere and lift them up. And that's why Paul says to Timothy, be a vessel for honor. I remember when Pastor Benny Hinn told us young preachers and he said, I've spent hours, decades, every night. He says, watching History Channel. He says, my weakness and obsession was History Channel. And I was looking, I was like, that's an obsession? I was like, that's like, I was like, that's weird. He says, you guys, and I loved history. His staff testified, he's a history genius. Benahin can tell you about every king of Jordan. He can tell you about Stalin's family, probably more than the Stalin's family knows. He, he amused us in a dinner that we were had about different facts. And he said, Vladimir, he said, all for nothing. He said, my wife would go to sleep and I'm glued to a TV for three hours watching documentaries about history. He said, it entertained me, but it didn't edify me. It didn't enlighten me. 
he said not one person got healed of cancer because I learned about Stalin he said my crusades did not get better and he says at 60 the Holy Spirit says separate yourself to me from history channel he says what good does it do to your future he says your head is exploding with information you can't use and it's only occupying your space and he said to us young preachers he said please if I would have given up my history earlier he says I wonder if my history would have been different actually I just came up with that I just reworded this what he said he said a little bit differently but it, that sound is so good <laughs> sorry pastor Benny you can use that <laughs> that sound is so good amen I just gave credit to Benny Hinn but it's I came up with that <laughs> he did say he says I wonder what my life would have been if I wouldn't spend all the time in front of history but I would have spent time with Holy Spirit he says in the last three years he said I decided to take the two three hours that I spent on history and I read the Bible he says in the morning for two three hours and pray he says and I started to do same thing in the evening except with the Hebrew Bible with tears down his eyes he says I discovered Jesus I never knew he says I met Jesus like like for the first time and I'm sitting there I'm you know 30 something years of age and I started to remember there's different things that they're not bad but they are pulling my heart away from the Holy Spirit and yes maybe the Holy Spirit is not rejected or blasphemed but he is grieved because I know myself when my head hits the pillow I don't feel his smile sometimes I feel a sense of sadness and I do know the very things that I would give my attention to they have no direct connection to my writing to my preaching, to my leading and to my praying. Not one demon is going to be exposed just because I know certain those things. And I remember telling our teenagers, telling our young leaders that we meet on Tuesday night and I said guys the video games, the obsessive consumption of YouTube funny videos, that is great once in a while you can do that but if it's every night and every day it will not benefit your career, it will not benefit your business, it will not benefit your future. It will not benefit your anointing. Separate yourself to me, says the Holy Spirit. What would happen if Apostle Paul wouldn't do that in chapter 13? Up to chapter 13, Paul only had a radical encounter with God, but he had no radical journey with God. See, some of you, the only thing you got is your radical past encounter with God. But the radical encounter can turn into a lifestyle of radical journey with God. If you separate yourself to me, says the Holy Ghost. Now separate yourself. Now, not tomorrow, not after Thanksgiving, not after Christmas, but now separate yourself to me, says the Holy Ghost. And when you separate yourself, you will find new appetite. You will find new hunger. You will like new things. You will have new hunger and new passion and new thirst. And God will disconnect you from the things you found attractive. God will disconnect you from the things you found enjoyable. He will give you new taste buds. He will give you new passions. He will give you new desires. You will long for God like you've never longed for Him before. As the deer pants for living water, so my soul thirsts for you, God. Early in the morning I will rise. I will seek your face, God. You know who spoke that? It was a man who was more wealthy than all of us put together. It was a man who had all the power. And the Bible says at the sound of his name, his enemies trembled. And this man said, early I will seek you. As the deer pants. This wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to go to church. Panting, is, it's an ache. It's a hunger for God. A man after God's heart. Separate yourself to me, says the Holy Spirit. And then why do we separate ourselves the Holy Spirit and in the conclusion I want you to see what it happens he said separate to me Paul and Barnabas for the work to which I call them watch this there is a work you and I are currently doing but there is a work God called us to do the work we're currently doing is Peter fishing but the work Jesus called them is saving the nations. The work you're currently doing, I'm currently doing, is Paul persecuting but God is calling them to be an apostle. The work we're currently doing is Joseph managing prison 
but God calls them to manage a nation. I am not saying every person in this room is not doing what God called them to do but there are people in this room who are at the sound of my voice you're sitting on this bench and deep on inside of you there are dreams there is a calling there are prophetic words there is a well there is a water underneath of your dirt where you know that you know that you know God called you to lead a company God called you to start branches God called you to start a ministry God called you to invent something God called you to write something God called you to sing God called you to create God called you for that but what you are doing today is not that when you separate yourself to the Holy Spirit he will begin to fashion prepare you for the work he has for you after chapter 13 Paul was never the same after chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and so on is all the work Paul was called to do. Corinthians, Philippians, Timothy, Titus, Philemon and all of that was the work he was called to do. If he would have spent all of his life sitting just in the church and just minding everybody's business instead of being separate to the Holy Spirit, yes he wouldn't destroy his Christianity but he would have wasted it. See some of you, you set your bar too low you're afraid not to wreck your life. I want you to be afraid not to waste it. Live your life with a healthy fear. I don't want my life to be wasted. You're not just here to stay out of jail. You're not just here not to get divorced. You're not just here to not to contract sexual transmitted disease. You're not just here to get a child out of wedlock. You are here so that your potential is not wasted. So the people are healed because of you. People are delivered because of me. The books are written because of me. The albums are released because of you. The companies are started because of you. That you employ thousands of people because of what you were called to do. I want to share with you something that when you're called, your called work, when it's surrendered to the Holy Spirit, it comes with two things. Confirmation and commission. The Holy Spirit sent disciples, meaning Holy Spirit actually is the one that releases to you into it. And secondly, the people who were in charge of the church at the time, they blessed disciples. They didn't break out in rebellion. I believe when you separate yourself to the Holy Spirit, the right people open the doors for you. You don't have to push the door. Some of you, you have that, that anointing of a rebel. Nobody likes you. You just always rebel everywhere. You're revolutionary. That's why everybody wants to crucify you. That's what happens when you do it on your own. But when you separate yourself to the Holy Spirit, you have the blowing of the Holy Spirit. And people lay hands on these apostles. And the Bible says, and they sent them. And then it says on the top of the Holy Spirit says, I'm sending them too. That means that there's miracles. There's supernatural attachment to it. That doesn't mean that everything becomes easy. It's, it's, it could be a challenge. But when there has a, a favor of your boss, when it has the favor of some authorities, has the favor of some people who made it and they help you with that, it makes it so much different. Maria sent her testimony. She said the following, I decided to start a 21 day fast at the beginning of new year. During the time I started, uh, during the time in which I started my fast, these are the following things that were happening in my life. The summer before I had lost an amazing job in which I had a great pay. I did not speak in tongues. I was not happy with the job or the position that I had. My day-to-day -day life was just really dark. It didn't, it didn't totally suck but I wasn't happy and I felt as though there was a wall in front of me and I was fighting an unexistent battle day and night. So many people can relate to that right now. Many things started to happen during my 21-day fast and she went on a just, a, just the water, 21 days. One crucial thing that happened during my 21 day fast is the specialty practice out of Seattle, Washington sought after me. They decided after a meeting with me that they were going to open a new clinic here in Tri-Cities and I was going to be the person in charge of this clinic. Unqualified, uneducated for this position but with the help of God I successfully opened that clinic this September. Today I am a lead of team of technicians and doctors. Come on. I recently spoke in tongues at the home group. 
also during a sacrifice week at Hungry Gen, I knew I didn't have nothing big to sacrifice. But during one of our morning prayers, one of our pastors said, if you don't have anything, ask God to bless you with something so you may be able to give. I repeated that, pray, that pr prayer that day and later that week, God opened my mind and as to where I was going to get that gift, I gave my sacrifice the following week. And now my income has doubled and I did close I do close to nothing at my job. Not only that, but I'm the head of this company. And each one of my team members that works with me was handpicked and prayed over and have gotten to share this story with every single member of my team. Life is not perfect, but God has continued to sprinkle His blessings on my life. And most importantly, my walk is like no other. I just want to honor Maria. Maria, if you can rise. She's our translator. Come on. God changed Paul's job. He commissioned him to something different. I believe there are people at the sound of my voice. This time next year, you will be in a different situation. I believe there are people at the sound of my voice that the Holy Spirit has been asking to separate yourself to me and you've been ignoring that and for some reason today I'm pretty much my message is just describe your heart's cry and I'm here today to put a stamp on what God has been asking you to do and to tell you that when you separate yourself to Him it's not because He wants to make you more spiritual He will, wait, he will make you successful in the way that only He can make you successful. He will take your business to another level because it will be His work now. God is far more interested than to blessing you. He has an agenda to spread His kingdom. He needs you. He needs your business. He needs your success. He needs your company. He needs your gifts. And He says, give yourself to me. I will give you my strength. I will give you my favor. I will take you from chapter 13 where you are just among the rest of the people and I will cause you to stand up not for your name but for my fame. God will take you from your current job to your cold job. God will open the gift of writing. God will open the gift of creating. God will open the gift of the prophecy. God will open the gift that will make you stand in front of governors, presidents and officials in our government. God will make you stand in front of other world leaders. Why? Because your gift, because your vessel, He will take in His hand and He will pour His favor because you chose to be a vessel for honor. Everyone rise to your feet. I want you to stretch your hands toward the Lord right now and I want you to begin to say Lord I want to be a vessel for honor I want to be a vessel that honors the Holy Spirit I've honored my boss my employees I've honored my parents my children my boyfriend and I've honored my ex I've honored my college professors but God I want to separate myself to you yes I want to make money yes I want to make a difference but God I want to know you Holy Spirit I want you to be my best friend precious Holy Spirit I don't have any special things I don't have special connections but you can take me to a next season you can take me to the next job you can bring promotion that no man can bring and today I give you my heart I give you my affection I give you my desire